hay again. I'd like to do some worked examples of some loci questions or loci questions, however you want to pronounce that. There's two scenarios I'd like to look at. One involves a garden, and in this garden, it's more or less rectangular, you have a fence along one side, and you've got a wall along the other, a tree over here, and this is a, a scale drawing of the garden, and here's the scale. So one centimeter on my picture represents one meter in real life. So that means that the bottom of my garden is about, that reads 12 on my, my ruler, 12 centimeters on my picture. So that's going to be 12 meters in real life. And I want to plant a rose bush. Roses are nice, let's plant a rose bush. And I want to figure out where to put it. And these are my conditions. I want it to be closer to the fence than the wall. And I also want it to be less than four meters from the tree. I don't know why I want to do this. This is how the questions are set up on the exams and GCSE homework and things. Okay, so I have to meet two conditions. And here's my first condition. I want to be closer to the fence than the wall. So let's figure out where all those points are. After we've done that, we'll figure out where all the points for the second condition are. And the overlap is where I meet both conditions. So we'll start with being closer to the fence than the wall. So here's my fence, here's my wall, and this is an angle bisector question. If I figure out the angle bisector, that tells me every point on this line is equidistant, an equal distance from the fence and the wall. If I want to be closer to the fence, I want to be over here. And it's really tempting to just eyeball it and sort of scribble it in, but you have to show your construction marks or you won't get credit for the question. These questions are excuses to make you practice doing constructions. It would be interesting to know if landscape architects do this in real life. Maybe they do. I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to figure out the angle bisector. So here's my compasses. Put the stabby end where the fence meets the wall and mark off an equal distance. So there's a mark on the fence. Here's a mark on the wall. That sounds like graffiti, isn't it? I'm putting marks on the wall. Okay, so I put my, my stabby end where I measured off on the wall, swing in the middle, go over to the fence, swing an arc in the middle, and this crossing point and my vertex, that's how I'm going to draw my angle bisector. I'm going to do that in pencil because it's a thinner line than my fat orange pencil. So here's the corner where the fence meets the wall. Here's where I figured out the crossing for the angle bisector construction. And this line here, I'll go down to the end of the garden. All along this line, I'm an equal distance from the fence and from the wall. I don't want to be exactly on that line because I want to be closer to the fence. So I want to be on the fence side of this line. So I'm going to, sh excuse me, I'm just going to shade that in orange to make it clear to whoever is marking this homework. Nobody's marking this homework. To make it clear that all the orange points are closer to the fence than they are to the wall. Okay, cool. Let's go on to our second condition. Our second condition says um, we want to be less than four meters from the tree. Here's my tree. Four meters from the tree, that's going to be four centimeters on my map. This is a really nice scale. I don't have to, to think very hard. It's just the same numbers between the units. So four meters in real life will be four centimeters on my map. So here's my ruler. Set your compass at four centimeters. I'm going to twiddle it out and then I'll show you. I tightened the screw. This, this um, pair of compasses has a screw that goes through the middle. Sorry, I don't know how well that shows up. And on the other side, there's a, a nut that holds the, I guess it's a bolt. Sorry, it's a bolt that um, is held in place. And sometimes it gets a little loose, you know, through continuous use and you can get a screwdriver and just tighten it up. So I did that today and now it's really, really stiff to open and close it. Okay, so 
Here's four centimeters. Okay, so that's the radius of my compass. So I want to be less than four meters from the tree. So if I figure out where four meters is exactly, then I can figure out whether I want to be on the inside or the outside. So my stabby point is at the tree. I'm gonna swing my circle. And I notice that my circle goes outside the garden. It goes through my words as well. And I told you last time that you can go into your neighbor's garden, but don't say that I sent you. In terms of the picture, we're going to ignore where we've gone outside. But there's some interesting bits to notice about this being less than four meters from the tree. So everything in the green circle, I have not colored that in, here's your green circle. And if you live exactly on the green circle, then you are exactly four meters from the tree. We've just clipped the edge of the garden there, yeah? And we've, we've gone into the territory where we're closer to the wall. So if I colored this whole circle in green, that would meet all of this green condition. Maybe I'll just do that really lightly with horizontal lines so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, we've gone into the neighbor's garden there. And over here a little bit too. Okay, but we have, we've left out that bit of the, I mean, that, that's an accident of how I drew the garden. But that little corner is there and that, you know, that's important. So if I want to meet both conditions at the same time, I have to be in the green and the orange. And that means, I'll do it, I'll do it in purple. I guess purple shows up pretty nicely. So it's only this region here. I have to stay in my garden. Um, the neighbors will complain if I dig into there into their lawn. So this purple area, see the straight lines here are the, the walls of my garden and I just clipped the corner here. If I'm standing right in that very corner, I'm a, I'm a little bit further than four meters from the tree. So I guess I won't put the rose bush right, right in, that, in that far corner. Okay, so it's only this, this purple area here where I meet both conditions and I'm just putting funny marks so you can read it more clearly. Okay, it's no good putting the rose bush here because yes I'm close enough to the tree but I'm closer to the wall than the fence and that's no good. Okay, so this this funny shaped purple region is where I can put the rose bush. And they don't ask you to pick a place, they just say figure out the region we're talking about. So that's that's one way you can you can do these locus questions. And here's another one. Here's another one I drew up. Okay, so this is this is saying, suppose you've got a map and it's a picture of an island. Here's my beautiful green island and a big sea. I haven't colored the sea in. Okay, and I've got a harbor on my coast down here and I've got an airport on the other side of the island. And my scale for the map is one centimeter equals two miles. So every centi goodness me, every centimeter on the map represents two miles in real life. Just for fun, between the helicopter, excuse me, between the harbor and the airport, it's, mm, it's just over five centimeters, which means it's just over 10 miles. Okay, that's nice. Fairly sizable island. So. My scenario is that there's a helicopter flying around and I know that this helicopter is eight miles from the harbor and it's 10 miles from the airport. And here's the thing they don't really tell you. If you're up in the air, you might be thinking about measuring distances down to the ground and that's a sensible thing to think about. In these questions, they're assuming that everything is like a bird's eye view, just like you're looking down on this, this island as a bird's eye view. And if your helicopter is here, then you're taking horizontal distances to the landmarks on your map. So you're not worrying about the height of the, the helicopter. Maybe you never worried about that. Now, now you're worrying about it, only to be told you don't have to worry about it. So, Okay, so your helicopter is somewhere in the picture. 
We know that it's eight miles horizontally on the map from the harbor, and it's 10 miles horizontally on the map from the airport. And I want to know the possible locations of this helicopter. So again, I've got two conditions. I've got this purple condition being eight miles from the harbor, and I've got this orange condition being 10 miles from the airport. So I'm gonna do them one at a time. So the harbor is a point. If I want to be eight miles from the harbor, I'm looking at a circle around the harbor. And this is exact, is eight miles, not within eight miles, not further than eight miles. It's eight miles from the harbor. So eight miles, eight miles, that's going to be four centimeters. If I've done it wrong, send me an email. I think that's right. Okay, so four centimeters. Okay, so here's four centimeters and from the harbor, so I'll stab at the harbor. I mean, put my compass centered on the harbor and I'm gonna swing a circle. And my circle would go off the map and I'm just gonna stop it at the edge of the map because presumably this is an actual map on a nice table and I don't want to continue my circle onto the nice tabletop. It's your table, you can do what you like, but I'm gonna stop my circle here at the edge of the map. Okay, so my helicopter can be anywhere on the circle according to the purple condition. Maybe I'll just, I'll just go over that in purple just so we know. Okay, so there's my eight miles from the harbor. Okay, but I also know that at the same time, this helicopter is 10 miles from the airport. So 10 miles from the airport that's gonna be five centimeters. So I'll widen my compass a little bit more to five centimeters. Five centimeters is going to be 10 miles. Boy, these got really stiff when I tightened up the screw. There's a screw here, tighten that up. Okay, so there's five, five centimeters, 10 miles. And if I put my, my stabby point of the compass at the airport and I swing a circle, and I'm not going to go off the edge of my map. Okay, then my helicopter could also be anywhere on this this other circle, and I'll just go over that quickly in orange, so you know that it's the airport measurement. Okay, so I want to know where I meet both conditions at the same time, and that's going to be either I'll do it in pencil. It's either at this point down here. Presumably this is north. Let's assume that that's north. So it's either this point at the south of the island, over the water, or this point up on the north side of the island, just just almost at the shoreline. So those, those are the two places your helicopter could possibly be. And that's a nice kind of question you can ask for locust problems. Did you like that? You want to go in a helicopter? Oh, you want to fly the helicopter? Do they make rat-sized helicopters? <laughs>